Uh, thanks. Uh, so first of all, let me uh, start by thanking the organizers for setting up this very nice uh, program and uh, <clears throat> hope to see you all uh, frequently uh, back here. Um, so uh, today I'm going to speak about uh, collective description of uh, trapped fermions. Uh, and basically I'll focus on some exact uh, results. Um, so, uh, so this work uh, is mainly done with uh, Satya Mujumdar and Gregory Sher, and, um, and the plan is as follows. So uh, we are going to review some results on trapped fermions in one dimension and two dimension with that will give some background and motivation. And I'll show our results on fermions in 2D rotating trap with additional repulsive central potential. And then uh, I'm going to discuss some deep connections with uh, orthogonal polynomials and if I have time, quantum spin chains and random matrix theory. So, uh, so we'll start with uh, uh, very basic things and feel free to stop me and ask any questions. And it's okay if I don't uh, complete the, uh, the full plan. So, uh, so uh, the general motivation is that, of course, there has been a great uh, progress, great amount of progress in cold atoms. Uh, you have atoms in traps, you can have harmonic traps, box leg traps, and you can have uh, different kinds of spatial dimensions, tunable interactions, uh, variable, variable temperature and number of atoms. And um, you can also do collective density measurements by absorption imaging technique. And also you can do a uh, very sophisticated uh, uh, resolving of uh, level of a single atom through quantum gas microscopy. And uh, cold atoms is a very nice platform to study non-equilibrium dynamics. So, uh, so experimentally, there's a lot of motivation. And so it's an excellent platform to understand quantum and statistical behavior in many body systems. Um, and so I'm going to uh, focus on fermions in this talk. And I'm going to talk about non-interacting fermions. But of course, because they are fermions, you have poly exclusion principle. And we are going to see what kind of physics uh, results from these kind of poly exclusion principle. Okay, so that is the broad, uh, broad uh, plan. Um, so let me start with the uh, basic schematic. So imagine you have three fermions in a one dimensional harmonic trap. Okay, so, so this is the harmonic trap, this purple thing here. And imagine you have three fermions loaded in a one dimensional trap. So, uh, I mean, physically, you would expect that the collective density will be like some sort of a dome, right? Because you have three fermions, you're loading it on a harmonic trap. The collective density will be, presumably, there'll be more density at the center, and then the resulting density will be a dome, right? So that is, that is what you would expect. And, and uh, uh, you can ask this question about what is the collective density? Okay, and uh, these kind of things are very relevant. For example, here is a sample example where you can you can you can uh, sh you know show the density of lithium atoms, fermionic lithium atoms, not only in a coarse grain way, but also in a site resolved imaging way. Okay, so you can really like for example, if I can try to ask what is the uh, density at the edges of this cloud. Okay, so not just the bulk, but also the edges. So so this is uh, uh, so this is. Uh, sort of the schematic you can have in mind. Okay, it's a simple uh, question. I have fermions, free fermions. I load it on a harmonic trap. And I ask, how does it look in real space? If I take an image, how does it look in real space? Okay. Now, of course, uh, uh, there is the concept of bulk, and then there is a concept of edge. And, uh, and typically, there are studies in local density approximations or Thomas Fermi approximations where you, your approach is not really microscopic, but you say that if I have some external potential, uh, there is a relationship between external potential and the density, uh, somewhat escaping uh, going through microscopic procedure. Okay? And this kind of thing is, has been quite successful, but then what happens is that usually when you are interested in inhomogeneous systems and edge like physics, this kind of thing breaks down. Uh, local density approximations and all don't work. And this kind of uh, things were already been realized, uh, mentioned long ago by people like Cohn and Matheson, where they say that uniform electron gas, the traditional starting point of density-based many-body theories is inappropriate near electronic edges. So basically, if you have inhomogeneity or regions of small density, it's, it's, it's probably better to 
start with a more microscopic point of view okay so i hope the the goal is somewhat uh, clear okay so this is this is this is what we are after so is there a rigorous description of fermions in external traps okay okay so here is a nice review i would suggest uh, uh, you to look at it uh, 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 discussing such questions okay so now let me start with the simple setup this is single fermion in a trap okay so uh, please stop me if you have questions because i think if you understand the first uh, few slides then even uh, the later slides even if you don't understand the details i guess you will understand the take home message so please stop me if you have any questions so this is free fermions single fermion in a harmonic trap simple quantum harmonic oscillator problem you have all done this and uh, these are the single particle wave functions okay so everyone has seen this right so this is nothing uh, complicated and uh, important point is there's a gaussian here which is the, there's an alpha here which is basically inverse inverse width of ground state wave packet and this is because of quantum mechanics right these fluctuations are because of quantum mechanics and then you have this hermite polynomials which you might have all seen right in your courses so uh, so this is something that you should remember okay so you have hermite polynomials and you have uh, some gaussian this thing okay so you can generate hermite polynomials in this way for example seventh hermite polynomial is here okay the seventh hermite polynomial is here so uh, just for future purposes i am going to write down few uh, two statements about hermite polynomials that's just for you to know okay so it will be useful you take hermite polynomials go to mathematica or uh, whatever and you will see that the zeros of the nth hermite polynomial are real so take 11th hermite polynomial is a 11th order polynomial put it equal to 0 find the roots it is real okay that is one statement and there is this problem where xj is some unknown and imagine you have n of you have x1 x2 x3 up to xn and i have this equation xj is equal to summation k equal to 1 to n 1 over xj minus xk of course k not equal to j this is called stilchs problem okay and if you solve this algebraic equation this is very complicated right it's all it's coupled and there's this thing in the denominator it's a complicated problem but it turns out that the solution to this stilchs problem is also zeros of hermite polynomial okay so take three values of x, x1 x2 x3 do this problem see the solution and calculate the zeros of third order hermite polynomial you'll see that they match okay this is just we'll 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 try to use this in future but so now i do the next uh, next thing i start loading fermions okay so i hope everyone is understanding these energy levels right this is harmonic oscillator i keep loading but i have to respect poly exclusion principle so i keep loading it this way now i can ask how does it look in real space this is how i am going to fill the energy in the energy is this thing how is it going to look in real space this again is a reasonably easy problem because all you have to do is write the many body wave function as a slater determinant okay so so you just write a many body wave function as a slater determinant okay so this this phi i is what i had shown it is made of hermite polynomials and things like that and this determinant you, you take this determinant and this is the many body wave function okay so now <coughs> uh and and now i am okay so now we go to the next step is a determinant of some something that involves hermite polynomials okay so th this is what i have written here and it turns out that it, because it's a determinant of a matrix of polynomials you can write it as a van der monde matrix van der monde uh, uh, determinant okay so this is equal to this okay so you can you can just check this for you can take small examples three fermions and things like that you can write it as a matrix of uh, uh, polynomials determinant of matrix and then this is the answer so if you have three fermions you will have combinations like x1 minus x2 x2 minus x3 and so on. okay so this is the answer this is the many body wave function okay i hope everyone is uh, this thing so now you can ask what is the probability distribution so we are after how these things will look in real space okay so still we are far from the goal because this is just the many body wave function now here is the interesting part yeah 
alpha is here this one yeah, yeah i think you can show that uh, you can absorb alpha here yeah you can it doesn't depend yeah 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 it's, that's that's correct yeah okay okay good but the alpha is definitely here okay yeah okay so now you see if i do mod square of this and this is my answer right i i do this and this is the answer okay joint distribution of positions of fermions in the ground state okay this is my answer now it turns out on a completely different context if you have a um, gaussian unitary ensemble random matrix okay so uh, i cannot of course go to details here but but i would suggest you to look for example lectures of satya mujumdar in icts uh, website in icts youtube you can you, you have nice lectures of random matrices but basically the thing is if i forget this problem for a second just prepare random matrices random hermitian matrices meaning that i basically take elements of this uh, matrix i draw it from some independent cosine distribution i assure that i set up the problem such that it is hermitian i create these random matrices okay and then i compute the eigen value density of this random matrices the eigen the joint distribution of eigen values of a random matrix also has exactly this form okay so so i i i i make i make random matrices with all these elements taken from some gaussian distribution of some mean and variance but of course i have to make sure that the matrix is hermitian because i want eigen values to be real so the gaussian unitary ensemble has hermitian is a hermitian and its eigen values are real then i take those eigen values you can all do this in the you can write a mathematical code get those eigen values and then do it for many many random matrices do it for many many samples make a histogram of the eigen values you will see that it will exactly look like fermions free fermions in one dimensional track okay so that is the statement okay so so uh, so, the, so and, and here you can already see this and this is exactly analogous and and the analogy is precisely this eigen values of a random matrix is basically alpha times x1 x2 x this one this is the analogy okay so so one one good thing about this is uh, because of a uh, lot of things are known through random matrix theory etc etc you can lift some of those results and ask them what happens for cold atomic systems okay yeah Variance. Yeah. So usually your elements you take from uh, mean zero and variance one. Okay. And and but there is some uh, the the off diagonal and diagonal uh, there is a small subtlety there. But basically mean zero and variance one, and then you will get this. Yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, okay. So I I will. So basically uh, because of these connections, uh, immediately you can use certain properties. Uh, but i'll skip these things but eventually you can calculate densities of eigen values and the average density is given by the wigner semicircle law okay so the average density of uh, eigen values of a gue random matrix is basically the square root of 1 minus x square and this is exactly what happens in fermions so naively of course you could you could say that it's a dome right but but you have to do the details to show it square root of 1 minus x square i mean 1 minus x square power uh, gamma also is a dome for uh, for a huge range of gamma right so so here you basically can show that it is square root of 1 minus x square okay okay and then uh, you can ask what is the fluctuation of the rightmost fermion okay so imagine you can do this quantum gas microscopy and you can uh, get the get information of fluctuation of the rightmost fermion by multiple imaging of this using quantum gas microscopy and that fluctuation we know is going to be tracy widum distribution because we know that this is a map there is a mapping to random matrix and the fluctuation of the rightmost fermion is equivalent to the top eigen value of a random matrix okay the largest eigen value of a random matrix will have some fluctuations and that is going to be how free fermions in one dimensional traps will fluctuate okay so what i'm trying to say is that because of this mapping you can get lot of information right away for the cold atomic system okay anyway so okay so uh, um so basically wigner semicircle law i just explained here a bit the zeros of hermite polynomials if you actually take zeros of hermite polynomials and and make a density out of it okay you will see that that's also a semicircle 
Okay. Take 100 polynomials, 100 polynomials, Hermite polynomial, mark it zeros, and then do something simple like one over interparticle distance. Okay. You will actually it look like a Wigner's. It is a Wigner's semicircle. And the zeros of the Stilchus problem is also a Wigner's semicircle. So there's a deep connection between these and, of course, free fermions in 1D traps and random matrix, which I already discussed. And there are some connections with classical Dyson's log gas and uh, integral models, but I'll not get into that. Okay. So, but then you can ask some natural questions. Like one natural question is what happens in higher dimensions? Okay. Is there a random matrix theory connection higher dimensions? Okay. Now, if I take this random matrix and draw it from independent Gaussian distribution, but I don't care about its hermeticity, then the eigenvalues will be complex. So the eigenvalues will sit on the complex plane. They will take some shape. You can ask this question by looking at these eigenvalues of non Hermitian random matrices. Are they connected to some two dimensional fermions? Okay. So you can ask this question, right? So that is a question we, 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 we can ask. And basically, you can ask all sorts of questions. And uh, I mean, and these are quite, uh, could be quite important also uh, uh, in terms of experiments and so on. Okay. So now, naturally, what would you do? Naturally, you would. Uh, how do you make this problem more complicated? The first step is you make it a 2D trap, right? From 1D to 2D, right? Now, 1D to 2D, what would you expect? You would expect this Wigner semicircle to form what? If you just add one more, one more dimension to the trap. Okay. So you can, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, uh, so, so, you, so you can ask this. So this is a simple thing. Okay. I'm just adding one more, one more thing. But if you do the same procedure, Okay, this is really uh, you know, straightforward. Uh, you just do the same because they are just separable, right? Separable Hamiltonian. You will see that this is the density profile. It forms a cap. Okay, but interestingly, what happens is if you take the non Hermitian random matrix, one of which is Ginniber random matrix, eigenvalues will not form a cap. Okay, so if just by increasing the dimension, there is no non Hermitian random matrix which has this. Structure. Okay. Okay. So uh, prepare a gene UE. You can search for it and you can prepare this random matrix. Okay. And it turns out that the eigenvalue distribution of this Ginniber random matrix is actually a uniform disk. Okay. Somehow the eigenvalues arrange themselves as that they form a uniform disk. But this is clearly not a uniform disk. So we lose the random matrix connection just by going to one higher dimension. Okay. Okay, so now, okay, I think I'm going really slow, but I'll, I'll try to accelerate. Uh, so, so, okay, so then, uh, then basically what you can do is, you can say that, can I design a system where I can flatten this cap somehow? What would you naively think? Okay, I have this fermions in a 2D trap, but shall I do this? I'll just rotate it, hoping that the cap will go down, and then somehow the cap will go away, form a disk, and that Hamiltonian, along with this rotating term, would have connection to random matrix. And this is what is done. Uh, this was what was done before, uh, recently, where you can rotate this. OK, I cannot go to details here. There is no time. But you can rotate this, and you can show that uh, this rotating trap is essentially uh, related to non-Hermitian random matrices. OK? OK, is this clear? OK, so now, uh, now OK, so now uh, the point is, uh, so one thing is to, you know, you don't need to always make the connection to random matrix, but if you make, it's very good because you can use a lot of those uh, uh, results also. But then you can also ask generally the question about computing the density profiles without making connections to random matrix, okay? So now I'll go to uh, what we did. So I'll skip here because uh, I just will anyway come maybe, okay. So this I'll skip because here the energy level diagrams will be slightly more complicated because of rotation and all. But the logic is the same. You start filling fermions slowly. Okay. But you see, you are filling fermions here, but it's not very clear how they will actually look in real space. But this is the right, this is a very good way to do it. You fill it slowly and then ask what would be the density. Okay. Okay. So it turns out that there is, a, this is like you can think of it as a physical realization of Ginniber random matrices. Okay, Gin UE means non, it's an example of a non Hermitian random matrix because you need complex eigenvalues. If you want to compare it with something 2D, you need complex eigenvalues, right? Okay, so now, uh, okay, so now, uh, 
we asked this question so basically uh, i hope everyone understood at least the agenda so the general agenda would be the following you solve some schrodinger equation okay like i showed you we solved harmonic oscillator but of course sometimes this itself becomes non trivial because you need exactly solvable schrodinger equations right so this itself is not uh, obvious but once you do that you start filling the n fermions respecting poly exclusion principle okay you will get some energy level diagram you keep filling fermions then you ask how they would look for any finite n okay for n equal to 5 if you have 100 fermions how would they look you can ask that question in space okay and then of course uh, some of these answers will be very hard uh, it won't be explicit but you can make a lot of progress but then um, given that especially cold atomic systems the n is really large enough right you can study a large n theory okay so so somehow when you assume large n you can do some saddle point methods and actually write more explicit answers and then after that you ask is there any connections with random matrix theory orthogonal polynomials or some other quantum systems and so on. so this is a general uh, flow of approaching <laughs> this problem okay so so what we do is we consider the case of central potential because of many reasons uh, we also wanted some uh, very non trivial density profiles i mean in you know in not just a wigner semicircle or a cap but something can can you have situations where just by adding something you get very exotic density profiles okay so that is the that is the thing so here is our density profile sorry sorry uh, sorry this is the external potential external profile so you have a harmonic trap this one in 2d okay harmonic trap in 2d but i have also a 1 over r square so i have a central repulsion repulsion potential and then also there is a rotation okay so it's a rotating rotating 2d fermionic system in a trap along with a central potential okay i hope the model is clear okay there are some important parameters omega is the rotation frequency this omega is the trap frequency little omega and we'll come back to these parameters when when needed so it turns out that this itself is exactly solvable the schrodinger equation is exactly solvable okay uh, and you get in terms of uh, generalized lagrange polynomials now looking at this uh, could you guess what would be the density profile right so that is a, that is one question you can ask what would be a density profile if this is the external potential okay so you see sometimes naive uh, naive uh, guesses may not be entirely correct okay which i will try to argue so you would think that okay at most what would i have it looks like i will have a a dome but this dome will have some a little bit of a this thing right is this thing in it right some some depletion that's what you would but okay that 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 is that is happening but question is can you have something more exotic okay so 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 indeed indeed this is what we are going to answer okay any any questions yeah oh okay okay good good so uh, for that let us not even think about this central potential right the previous example previous example without central potential what this rotation is doing essentially uh, physically what it is doing the, is that the fermions are in some sense flying apart a bit because of rotation so the cap has become slightly spread out and that is why uh, the density has become uniform okay it's like it's like because you are rotating right okay but so it's a bit it's a bit risky to think very classically because it's a quantum system but but physically that is what it is it's like trying to fly out so the cap is gone and they, then it starts matching the there are there are some subtleties and some regimes but i don't have time to get into that okay okay so good so now uh, excuse me so on that account whether photons still have different profile of density ah uh, okay so so that so uh, yeah so that is uh, difficult to answer because because i mean you would expect still that bosons also will sort of have some depletion the cap will deplete but question is will it become flat because here for it to become flat this is a very important question so uh, here to become flat it was important that uh, the energy level diagram was in a particular way and you fill it in a particular way okay so probably what will happen is that any dome will flatten a bit but it is not guaranteed that it will become completely flat okay 
Okay, so okay, so I uh, so I okay, so now I'll go for uh, okay. I have uh, okay, so so let me just do, go directly to this. So here the energy level diagram you see is a little complicated. You have to derive it, but then you again start filling fermions. Okay, keep filling fermions. You should remember that if once I fill a fermion till here, I should next fill this layer. Okay, because I am filling fermions as low as energy as possible. Only thing I have to respect is Pauli exclusion principle. So I, if I fill fermions, I should not fill right away like this because there are other energy levels available here. So I'm looking at the ground state uh, density profile, right? So, so what is the way I can load fermions? Only respecting Pauli exclusion. So you see that if I give you like a number of fermions, like 100 fermions, what you will do is you will start filling it like this, but then after, let's say you've managed to fill 30 here, but then you have to again go fill like this, but then you'll again fill like this. So if I give you a number of fermions, you will be able to calculate how many bands are uh, going to come into action. Okay, I hope that is clear, right? So, so basically it is going to fix me the chemical potential. Okay. So, so that means that uh, here you got something, um, but then as soon as another band starts to play a role, very strange things can happen in real space. You see, that is the important thing, right? What is going to happen in real space? This is, you know, this is in the energy level diagram, you're filling it. But suppose I immediately start filling again fermions here, how would it impact the real space? Okay, so that is the, that is the question. Okay, so then, um, okay, so I, uh, okay, so this is the exact density profile that you can derive. There is a summation to do and so on and so forth. But, but let me go to the, uh, the figure, right? What do I see? So if I manage to fill fermions carefully this way, in this model that I discussed, this is how the density profile will look. So what will happen? So, so what happens in the density profile is the following. First of all, uh, there's a hole in the middle, okay? Uh, and this hole is because of that repulsive potential. Okay, and if you don't have that repulsive potential, you'll just not have this hole, okay? So, but uh, there's a hole in the middle. And then there's a layer structure here. So it's it's like a wedding cake, okay? So there's a, there's a, a layer of cake, then another layer, another layer, another layer. And then there's a hole in the middle of the wedding cake, okay? But, but, uh, but this, is, this is the shape it takes. Okay, so now you see, uh, now obviously uh, this is not really obvious if I had just given you the, you know, external potential and asked you to guess, right? So you have to do these calculations and you'll see that there's a layer of the wedding cake. It's a wedding cake structure. Okay, so, okay. So now, uh, now why are these multi-layers forming? Why are these multi-layers forming? It turns out, that these layers are forming as soon as another band is activated. So I, let's say I have 20 fermions. I only fill this. Then you'll just get one layer cake. But if I have 30, I have to activate the next band. And the way it manifests in real space, it forms another layer. So every time a band is involved, it forms layers. Okay. So, so this is, this is the, this is the story. What happens approximately. So obviously, uh, you know, by now you should, uh, you can realize that even a cap did not have random matrix theory connection. This is very unlikely to have random matrix theory connection, right? So, so of course, if there is no hole, then it's just a layers of disks. Okay. Right. It's, it's just layers of disk that you can think of as layers of Geneva random matrices. You take a Geneva random matrix, you get a disk, take another Geneva random matrix, make another. So you can think of it that way, but with the hole, you lose the random matrix theory connection at this level, okay? But then you can still ask, okay, uh, it's okay that the density profile doesn't have a random matrix connection, but is there anything else in this uh, fine features which have random matrix connection? Okay, so, okay, so then, then what we can do is we can go to the, for every layer, there's an edge, okay? And if you go to the edge and zoom it in, okay, then it turns out that there is a kink here. Okay, if you zoom in, there's a kink. Okay, so go to the edge and zoom it in, you will get a kink. It turns out that if I go to second, another layer, I'll get two kinks. So for the nth layer, I'll have n kinks. Okay, so here, so that is what is going to happen. So, uh, which I will show in the next slide. So, 
in the bulk you just see layers but then at the edge of each layer there's a nice mathematical structure um so um so 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 that is what i will uh, talk about um so now uh, 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 there are also some large end results so till now whatever i spoke about is that any finite n you can uh, you can uh, can i take 3 minutes or something okay okay so at any finite n we had some expressions but in large n you can derive in large n what happens is that you can reparameterize things and do some more analytics and and you can derive uh, analytical expressions for density okay um but this diagram is very important you can derive some critical lines where if i go through a critical line i create a new layer okay so this m is related to original parameters of the problem but basically i can tune something like frequency or something and create more layers okay so that's what we tried to show here you can create more layers and so on okay so i'll uh, so so then you can derive uh, 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 for formulas for these critical lines but the idea is that i can tune some parameter in the problem uh, mostly frequency and by tuning frequency given uh, some fixed number of fermions i can actually add or remove layers okay so that's what this is saying this kind of plot okay so so uh, so uh, i okay so this density in the large and limit okay these slides are, are going to be in the website so you can take a look at the details but let me uh, just uh, uh, say something about the edge one uh, so you can show that the density profiles you can write it as indicator functions and so on this is uh, some details but let me just say a few things about uh, the edge yeah i just wanted to say some things about the edge now here you see uh, this is a kink and if i go to next layer actually i'll find two kinks okay so if i go to the fifth layer i'll find five kinks now we wanted to look if these kinks are connected to random matrix theory it turns out that the location of the kinks of the kth band coincide with zeros of the kth hermite polynomial okay so so the density the 2d density may not have direct connection with some ginebra random matrix or something but this kind of edge profile of these fermions can be connected to um, uh, hermite polynomials and and random matrices and wigner semicircle and so on and so forth okay so this is and then you can show that and then once you know that connection uh, you can then use li literature of random matrix theory and then show that uh, there is all sorts of connections to random matrix theory and so on okay so I, so there is also connection with uh, quantum spin chains and all but i'll i'll try to skip this um and uh, uh, we can also work out if you just cross this critical line how is this second layer being formed okay so this kind of things can be worked out but i don't have uh, time for this and you can ask uh, these kind of questions uh, about how these uh, new layers are formed and so on but then uh, uh, the take home message is the following that density profile of ground state of n non interacting fermions and rotating trap exhibits a rich multi layered wedding cake structure there's a very interesting phase diagram in parameter space where you can really create new layers we believe that this all these things most of these things at least will be outside the typical lda thomas fermi methods used in cold atomic systems so in some sense this is a good example where you really have to do some microscopic based approach then there are connections to random matrix spin chains orthogonal polynomials and algebraic equations and this is the density profile i hope everyone uh, sort of understood the uh, shape of this profile and uh, uh, so i uh, just wanted to end by saying that uh, we loaded fermions like uh, just one by one respective poly exclusion but you can ask about what happens in excitations finite temperature excitations right and then this problem becomes quite hard but this, uh, many things are doable and this is ongoing work with uh, pierre ledusal satya mujumdar and gregory share um there are interesting questions about uh, band filling of fermions which is related to something called alpha determined processes in mathematics uh, that uh, you can see the literature here um, and uh, you can calculate number variance entropy correlations gap statistics and once you have sort of a good understanding of the 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 density profile you can then study some sort of hydrodynamics or dynamics right and this is something also which we are uh, we are interested in thanks thanks okay. thank you professor kunkalni for a very educative talk and uh, we can take few questions if you have i have a question oh, please
it's very intriguing. So this Hermite polynomials recurring and uh, the zeros. Uh, so it seems like this Hermite polynomial connection, very simple mindedly, is this harmonic trap. Yeah. But when you are actually starting to change this potential, like normally simple mindedly, we would not expect Hermite polynomials to show up at all. So is this like a perturbative um, result all through, or is it? Uh, no, no. So, so yeah. So this. So it's kind of magical. The zero, like. Yes, yes. So, so this is actually it turns out to be quite interesting in the sense that uh, in the two D case, uh, when we look at uh, so this is like a wedding cake, and if you probe the edge, that edge has uh, Hermite polynomials in it. That's what you're asking, right? So that there. Uh, uh, I'm saying globally, the Hermite polynomials are showing up for the uh, harmonic nature of the trap. For the one D case. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But so, for two D. Yeah. For 2D, uh, they don't show up uh, mm -hmm. because because what happens is that um, uh, yeah, it's, 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 uh, you basically uh, somehow so 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 effectively very uh, very effectively what happens is that if you just forget this problem and think of classical particles, what happens is that when classical particles interacting interact like a like in this way log x i minus x j, okay, so minus j log x i minus x j. Um, I not equal to J, and then let's say you have X I square. Okay. So if these particles in one D have logarithmic repulsion, only then you get Hermite polynomials. But effectively in two D, it's a complicated story. So you need a particular kind of effective repulsion. So basically, a Pauli exclusion principle is re resulting in an effective repulsion of fermions, and that repulsion of fermions should be in a particular way, and only in one D. In that particular way, you have connection to Hermite polynomials. So that's why you completely lose it in two D. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think I think. Um, um, uh, I mean, you could use one. You, you could probably use some notion uh, results of free fermions and probably say some things about Hermite polynomials if that is your. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you could. Uh, you know, you could use that. Uh, yeah, you could uh, probably make use of uh, things. Uh, so, uh, so many times we go in the other direction where we use properties of random matrices and say things about uh, cold atomic gases. But certainly, if you are able to load fermions in a particular way, maybe uh, it may help in finding roots of very large algebraic equations. Yeah, yeah, that that would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Especially if it is faster, right? Like especially if it is faster. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. I have a question from experimentalist perspective. So, at the end, your results had some similarity with the uh, Bose Hubbard model solution in in the wedding cake, for example, in Mott uh, insulator. Huh. Huh. Uh, so, can you comment on that? That uh, in optical lattices, for example, when you start filling bosons and then you huh. will have that wedding cake kind huh. of a structure. So, right, right. is there a connection physically? Yeah. So this. Uh, this I think uh, we really need to think. Uh, this I think is not uh, so. So what uh, uh, we really relied on some exact solutions of mm -hmm. free fermions. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, it's not clear uh, how much we could uh, you connect this with bosonic systems. In in for strongly interacting bosons in optical lattices, then you right. can actually show the. Um, right, the wedding right. cake actually experimentally. I see, I see. So, so maybe we should, yeah. I mean, uh, in one D, if you have, suppose in one D, you have mm -hmm. very strongly interacting mm -hmm. bosons. Mm -hmm. For many things, they will start behaving like free exactly. fermions. So that's what. So I maybe you could we could think of that sort of tongs limit. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So 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 that's something we should think about. Yeah. So, exactly. So, so is there thing. a connection through your theory? That's the question. Yeah, I, I think there should be actually. In fact, I think we should start thinking of uh, tongs gas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so 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 yeah. Yeah, thanks. So, uh, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like uh, the density function is a continuous function, right? So, uh, here we are mapping it to the uh, spectrum of uh, the random matrix huh. eigenvalues. So, how is it like, uh, what are the dimension of the matrix that we are taking? Oh, no. So, that is the interesting thing. So, for example, let's say you have 100 by 100 random matrix, right? But let's say the fermionic problem had like whatever number of fermions. Okay, you take hundred by hundred uh, random matrix, you will get hundred eigenvalues, right? Keep it aside. Then again, take another hundred by hundred random matrix. It's a new random matrix. Again, uh, find the eigenvalues. Keep it aside. Do this couple of times. Then take all this data and make a histogram. 
you will get a you will get a profile density of states basically right density of eigen values so when you do a sufficient amount of times you will get smooth profiles and that will map, match to fermions yeah 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 uh, just uh, so it's related to substrate you were asking yeah, so so can we extend this uh, directly to hardcore uh, 1d bosons or it's uh... okay so that's so so uh, the question is uh, if i so uh, so we should look at uh, so maybe i'll i'll try to look at so uh, if we want to see ask this exact question um infinite delta repulsing boson in a harmonic trap exactly yeah. um whether the density profile of that coming from a completely bosonic calculation matches our calculation exactly. so i think that it should uh, but uh, but i i think i want to check that rigorously so mm -hmm. for the tongs limit uh, are there exact solutions known in external traps okay. without making the mapping to fermions okay and uh, basically it solve the liblinger model with some extra additional trap somehow then take the large uh, uh, delta interaction and ask if you get this answer and i think you should get the wigner semicircle i mean maybe some details may be different but i think you should get the wigner okay. semicircle yeah so yeah. second question yeah. suppose if i add a slight uh, perturbation uh, we will uh, interaction here because of paucity of time so, so you can discuss personally okay, with okay. him sure sure we can discuss uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we go for next lecture let us thank his speaker once again for thanks thanks thanks